Cleo de Merode. Cleopatra Diane de Murrow, 27 September 1875, 17 October 1966, was a French dancer of the Belle Epoque. She has been referred to as the first real celebrity icon and the first modern celebrity. She was also the first woman whose photographic image, due in particular to photographers Natter and Leopold Emil Utlinger, was distributed worldwide. Biography Cléo de Merode was born in Paris, France, on 27 September 1875. She was the illegitimate daughter of Viennese Baroness Vincentia Maria Cassilia Catharina de Merode, 1850-1899. Cléo's uncle was the landscape painter Carl von Merode, born Carl Johann Joseph Vitus de Merode, 1853-1909, although he is often cited as being Cléo's father. He was in fact Vincentia's younger brother. Vincentia was estranged from Cleo's father, who was the Austrian judge, lawyer, and pioneer of tourism Theodore Christomanos. Cleo did not meet him until she was a young adult. She was raised Catholic. At the age of eight, she was sent to study dance with the Sisters of St. Vincent de Paul, and she made her professional debut at the Paris Opera at age eleven. Fimerode became renowned for her glamour even more than for her dancing skills, and her image began appearing on such things as postcards and playing cards. At 16, she debuted her signature hairstyle, a chignon which became the talk of Parisian women and was quickly adopted as a popular style for all. At the same time, the hairstyle, which covered her ears, caused rumors to circulate that de Merode was missing one of or both of her ears. In 1895, Henry de Toulouse Lautrec did her portrait, as would Charles Puyot, Alfredo Muller, Edgar Degas, Manuel Benedetto, Georges Claren, Friedrich August von Kolbach, who painted her twice, Joseph Ripel Ronay, Francois Flame, Carlos Vasquez Ubeda, Einar Nerman, Henry Jervek. She was sculpted by the likes of Alexander Falguier, who sculpted her twice. Marion O'Benlior, Alphonse Mucha, Ernst Sedger, and Eugene Denis Arundel. A sculpture of her done by an anonymous artist can be found at the Gallery Tourbillon, and a wax mask of her by Georges Despret is preserved at the Musée Fin de Sécle Museum in Brussels. Georges Gerset also drew several caricatures of de Moreau during the 1900s. Her picture was taken by some of the most illustrious photographers of the day, including Natter and his son, and successor Paul Natter, Leopold Emil Utlinger, and his son Jean Utlinger, Charles Ogerau, Henry Manuel, and Otto Sarony. In the fall of 1895, a rumor began that de Merode was King Leopold Roman II's latest mistress, and the two were dubbed Cleopold by the media, because the king had had two children with a woman reputed to be a prostitute. De Merode's reputation suffered and she was labeled a courtesan or demimonde, both of which she is still referred to as today. In an attempt to settle the rumors, de Merode's mother wrote a letter to the editor of Le Figaro, which was published, and then subsequently mocked due to poor spelling. The French agent, Xavier Paoli, recorded in his 1911 book Their Majesties as I Knew Them, that the king had never met nor seen de Merode perform, and was unsure of how the rumors began. When he finally met de Merode after the rumors were already rife, he apologized to her, allow me to express my regrets. He told her, if the good fortune people attribute to me has offended you at all, alas, we no longer live in an age when a king's favor was not looked upon as compromising. Besides, I am only a little king, de Merode wrote in her autobiography. Michael Garvel, de Merode's biographer, claims that the rumors began after the king accosted de Merode in the foyer de la dance at the Paris Opera, and that the king may have staged the affair to conceal his actual relations with Emilien de Lenkin. Garvel has also said that although de Merode posed as a courtesan to increase her fame, she never worked as one. In the spring of 1896, a second scandal erupted due to the exhibition of the sculpture La Danseuse by Alexander Falguier, at the Salon des Artistes Franquais. The sculpture was a life-size nude in white marble that was carved from a plaster cast of de Merode's body. Despite the grain of skin visible on the plaster, 
proving a live cast, de Marod accused Falguier of having fabricated a scandalous work by molding the body of the statue on another female model, whereas she posed only for the head. The scandal followed her throughout her career. Almost a decade later, in 1904, the sketch wrote, Cleo de Merod is of course well known because of her beauty and the Falguier statue, and not on account of her quality as dancer, which is not remarkable. Although de Merod vehemently denied posing for the sculpture, she later incorporated the work into a stage production in which she starred. The sculpture can now be seen at the Musée d'Orsay. In the summer of 1896, de Merod appeared in a simulated nude scene in the title role of Freyne, a three-act ballet pantomime staged at the Casino Municipal in the seaside resort of Royan. She later recalled, I appeared before the jury enveloped in a dark gray-blue drapery. I danced in this costume, and my gestures made the long folds of fabric undulate in a pretty manner. Underneath I wore a pale rose maillot, covered with a light rose gauze tunic, which hugged my form, when the moment came to seduce the judges, a follower, with one gesture, raised the image. That year she was also elected beauty queen, by 3,000 out of 7,000 votes by readers of illustration. She garnered almost 1,000 votes more than other celebrated names, including Sarah Bernhardt and Gabrielle Rajane. Despite the two scandals, de Merod became an international star performing across Europe and in the United States. In 1897, she arrived in New York City, where she appeared for a month at Coster and Biles. During her stay in New York, de Merod's performance was heavily anticipated, but was disappointing, the press praising her beauty but saying that she could not dance Muncie's magazine said of her, Cleo de Merode can go back to her inconspicuous position among the ballet dancers at the Paris Opera, crowned with the distinction of having made the most successful failure of the season. Critics and public joined in a chorus. Despite the letdown, de Merode made over 40 times her regular monthly Parisian salary, which drew criticism resulting in de Merode being dismissed as an article de Paris alluring, but worthless. In 1898, de Merode was awarded first prize at an exhibit of the New York Camera Club as being the most beautiful woman in Paris. In 1900, she caused a sensation at the Exposition Universelle with her fake Cambodian dance. She also appeared in two films, one of which was hand-tinted in color, both showed her dancing. At the height of her popularity, she chose to dance at the Foley's Berger in a three-act pantomime titled Lorenza, taking the risk to do something other elites of the ballet had never done before. Her performance gained her a new following, and her popularity further increased. In 1902, de Merode performed at the Alhambra in London, where her performance was not well received. In contrast, she was popular in Sweden, visiting there in 1903 and 1904. In 1904, she reprised her role as Freyne at the Olympia. In 1906, it was reported that 50 million photographs of de Merode had been sold and that a single Berlin firm produced 4 million a year. The following year, Everybody's magazine compared her to the Virgin Mary. Jean Cocteau wrote of her, She is the beauty of beauty, the virgin who is not the pre-Raphaelite lady who walks with downcast eyes through groups. The profile of Cleo is so graceful, so divine that the cartoonists break it. In 1912, de Merod appeared in the opera La Danseuse de Pompey as part of the corps de ballet at the Opera Comi. During World War I, she entertained wounded soldiers. She continued to dance until her late forties, Rupert Dune's partnering of de Merode in a 1924 social dance recital reportedly inspired Frederick Ashton to pursue a career in dance. Despite a successful comeback, de Merode retired in 1924. She also spent time at the Chateau de Rastignac with the Lowick family. At the request of theater, director Henry Varna, she reappeared on stage at the Alcazar in June 1934 in La Revue 1900 alongside the dancer George Skibine. De Merode later reflected, I was wearing a pink satin dress, boned at the waist very long, with a ruching at the bottom. We danced five waltzes in a row, 
we ended with a big whirlwind, and Skibine carried me in his arms to the back of the stage. She then taught ballet before retiring in 1965 at 90 years old. As a hobby, she crafted figurines of dancers, shepherds, and shepherdesses in the classical style, which she then sold. In 1923, Demerode unsuccessfully sued the owners of the film Peacock Alley 1922 for 100,000 francs in damages, alleging that the film injured her reputation by burlesquing incidents in her career. In 1950, Demerode sued Simone de Beauvoir for libel, claiming five million francs in damages. De Beauvoir had wrongly described her as a prostitute who came from peasant stock and had taken an aristocratic-sounding stage name as self-promotion in her book The Second Sex. De Merode won the lawsuit, and the passage was taken out of the book. However, De Merode only received one franc in damages because the judge found that Cleo had permitted the rumors during the course of her career for their publicity value. In 1955, she published her autobiography, Le Ballet de Ma Vie, The Dance of My Life. In 1964, Dumerode was photographed by Cecil Beaton and featured in the February 15, 1964 issue of Vogue. Dumerode never married or had children, which has led some biographers to categorize her as a lesbian. Paul Klee, who personally knew Dumerode, called her probably the most beautiful woman alive, and said she seemed asexual in a 1902 diary entry. The French novelist Felish and Champsor reportedly became obsessed with de Merode and proposed marriage to her multiple times. In her autobiography La Belle de Mavai, de Merode claimed that she had only been involved with two men in her life. She was engaged to a French aristocrat for nearly ten years before he died, of typhoid fever in 1904, and she was the companion of the Spanish sculptor and diplomat Louis de Perinat, Marquis de Perinat from 1906 to 1919. De Merode was close friends with the musician Raynal Dohan, who she met when she was 17. She lived with her mother until her mother's death in 1899. She was a vegetarian. Cleo de Merode died on 17 October 1966, in her Paris apartment at 15 Rue de Teheran, and was interred at Pierre Lachaise Cemetery in Division 90. A statue of her by Louis de Perinet, mourning her mother, who is interred in the same plot, decorates the gravestone. In popular culture, in 1896, de Merode was featured in the American Tobacco Company's Sweet Caporal brand pinback series of celebrated actresses. More de Merode themed items followed, including a nightgown, artificial flowers, cigars, and underwear, the latter two sold for decades. The 1897 French operetta Les Fetards parodied de Merode and King Leopold Roman II's rumored affair, with their names being changed to The and Ernest Roman III. The musical comedy The Rounders on Broadway and on tour nationwide from 1899 to 1900 was based on Les Fetards, and the character of Fee was portrayed by Phillies Rankin. In December 1897, Coster and Biles Traveling Company presented the big burlesque extravaganza Gayest Manhattan at the Taylor Opera House in Trenton, New Jersey, which featured Gertie Reynolds as the American Cleo de Merode. In May 1900, the John P. Dousman Milling Company of De Pere released a blotter calendar with de Merode's photograph on it. The following year, Gimbals and Palais Royal released a line of Cleo de Merode dolls, complete with clothing and accessories. Lion de Pouge's 1904 novel Les Sensations de M. de Labring places de Merode and King Leopold Roman II at a Sabbath. She refers to de Merode as Mio de Laclef, who personified love without making it, and calls King Leopold Roman II a grand old man with a white beard, her devoted eunuch. In 1918, she was played by Dorothy Newall in the musical Revue Hitchiku. The following year, a comic character named after de Merode appeared in the operetta C. She is mentioned in Henry William Pfister's 1922, Book Abroad with Mark Twain and Eugene Field. The character Cleo of Paris, played by Mie Murray in the 1922 American silent film Peacock Alley, 
was a parody of de Marotte. She was portrayed by Fern Androv in the German silent film Women of Passion, 1926, and the character Lee de Castro played by Saffron Burroughs in the Austrian art house film Klimt, 2006, is based on de Marotte. The film focuses on an imaginary romance between the artist Gustav Klimt and Lee de Castro, a Parisian dancer. The character was supposed to be named after de Marode, but was changed to Lee de Castro a riff on Leticia Castor, who was originally supposed to portray her, and Cleo de Marode. In reality, de Marode and Klimt never met or had an affair, and de Marode was not one of his art subjects or muses. In 1940, Artist and filmmaker Joseph Cornell constructed a glass-fronted shadow box dedicated to de Marode called El Egypt de M. Cleo de Marode. In 2011, Charles Simic published a poem about the box and de Marode, which read, Dolls form, loose red sand, wood ball German coin, several glass and mirror fragments, twelve corkstopped bottles, cut-out sphinx, sick head, yellow filaments, two intertwined paper spirals, cut out of Cleo de Marode's head. Cut in 2012, Michael D. Garvel published the book Cleo de Marode and the Rise of Modern Celebrity Culture, which explores the legacy of de Marode and studies the neglected prehistory of a visual culture populated by and obsessed with celebrities. In 2016, Aaron Jaff and Jonathan Goldman reaffirmed this in their book Modernist Star Maps, Celebrity, Modernity, Culture. The following year, de Marode was briefly mentioned in Edward Ross Dickinson's book Dancing in the Blood, Modern Dance and European Culture on the Eve of the First World War, which is about the impact of modern dance on European cultural life in the early 20th century. In November 2019, Vogue Spain published an article about de Marode's contribution to the celebrity phenomenon. In 2020, Greg Jenner published the book Dead Famous, An Unexpected History of Celebrity from Bronze Age to Silver Screen, which is about how instrumental modernity's earlier technologies were in propelling celebrity culture, such as daily newspapers, and how the celebrity phenomenon has changed and stayed the same. The book briefly talks about de Marode and her rise to fame. In April 2021, Vanity Fair France wrote an article about de Marode and King Leopold Roman II's rumored affair.